am I live? Am, am I live? Can you hear me? Am I audible? I am live! So, I was just playing with makeup tonight, and I was originally going to do like a proper full length video to stick into the queue for my channel. But then I was like, I miss the group. I haven't streamed exclusively in the group for a long time for Phoebe's Cozy Corner. So I figure because I look I look like Simulacra in simulation right now, why not read Simulacra in simulation? So God, I hope I'm audible. But Tonight, I thought I would just do a brief selection from Jean Baudrillard's Simulacra and Simulation, entitled Clone Story. And in the comment or chat box or whatever, or I guess it's over here, it's over here on my screen, if you could just let me know that the audio is in fact working. I'm seeing people, so I think that means that it's working. Um, also, just going into this. Please forgive my appearance. I was really just playing with makeup. Jean Baudrillard, Simulacra and Simulation, Clone Story. <laughs> Baudrillard. Of all the prostheses that mark the history of the body, the double is doubtless the cost. Oldest. Doubtless the oldest. Jesus. I'm completely sober right now, by the way. <laughs> it's just late. <laughs> I'm really ADHD. Of all the prostheses that mark the history of the body, the double is doubtless the oldest. But the double is precisely not a prosthesis. It is an imaginary figure which, just like the soul, the shadow, the mirror image, haunts the subject like his other which is what makes it so that the subject is simultaneously itself and never, re never resembles itself again, which haunts the subject like a subtle and always averted death. This is not always the case, however. When the death, double, materializes, when it becomes visible, it signifies imminent death. Oh God, I hope it's not happening again. In other words, the imaginary power and wealth of the double, the one in which the strangeness and, at the same time, the intimacy of the subject to itself are played out, resists on immateriality, on the fact that it is and remains a phantasm. Everyone can dream and must have dreamt his whole life of a perfect duplication or multiplication of his being. But such copies only have the power of dreams and are destroyed when one attempts to force the dream into the real. The same is true of the primal scene of seduction. It only functions when it is phantasmed, remembered, never real. Belong to our era to wish to exercise this phantasm like the others. That is to say, to want to realize, materialize it in the flesh and bone and in a completely contrary way to change the game of the double from a subtle exchange of death with the other into the eternity of sh of <laughs> not to read shame same the eternity of same <laughs> clones cloning human cuntings ad infinitum each individual cell of an organism capable of again becoming the matrix of an identical individual in the united states a child was born a few months ago like a geranium from cuttings this guy really has it out for test tube babies. The first clone child, the lineage of an individual by vegetal multiplication. The first born from a single cell of a single individual, his father, the sole progenitor, of which she would be the exact replica, the perfect twin, the double. Dream of an eternal twining substituted for sexual procreation that is linked to death. Cellular, several, so, <laughs> cell, cell, cellular, oh god, this is just going to keep getting worse, cellular dream of cissiparity, the purest form of parentage, because it finally allows one to do without the other, to go from the same to the same, one still has to use the uterus of a woman and a pitted ovum, but this support is ephemeral, and in any case anonymous, a female prosthesis could replace it. Oh. 
Monocellular utopia which, by way of genetics, allows complex beings to achieve the destiny of protozoas. Thanks, Pablo. Uh, I didn't mean it like that. Um, yeah, I was actually, so, pause. I was doing my makeup and I was like, I'm feeling, feeling kind of super goth tonight. And I was originally going to do a reading for the channel um, from, where did I, where did I, where did I put Fisher? Well, uh, Flatline Constructs and uh, Gothic Materialism from Mark Fisher. Um, oh, my makeup mirror is sitting on it. But I was going to do that, and then I ended up spending so much time trying to play with my makeup that by the time I got round to it, I didn't have time to actually arrange my proper video, video stuff set up. So I wanted to do something to document it. So why not go to the yard live? Yeah, I'm, I'm not ever doing this full of a face ever again. I never wear this much makeup. <laughs> I'm wearing actual foundation. Back to Baudrillard. What if not a death drive would push sexed beings to regress to a form of reproduction prior to sexuation? Besides, isn't this the form of cisiparity, this reproduction and proliferation through pure contiguity that is, for us, in the depths of our imaginary death and the death drive? What denies sexuality and wants to annihilate it, sexuality being the carrier of life, that is to say, a critical and mortal form of reproduction? And I'm going to reread the actual part of that sentence. What if not death drive would push, push sex beings to regress to a form of reproduction prior to sexuation and that at the same time would push them metaphysically to deny all alterity, all alteration of the same in order to aim solely for the perpetuation of an identity, a transparency of the genetic inscription no longer even subject to the vicissitudes of procreation. Let's leave the death drive aside. Is it a question of the phantasm of autogenesis? No, because such a fantasy still passes through the figures of the mother and the father, father. sexed parental figures that the subject can dream of effacing by substituting himself for them, but without denying the symbolic structure of procreation at all. Becoming one's own child is still being someone's child. It's so fucked up. <laughs> Freud would have a field day. Oh boy. Well, Freud would have a field day with all of the... All of the French. Whereas cloning radically abolishes the mother, but also the father, the intertwining of their genes, the imbrication of their differences, but above all, the joint act that is procreation. The cloner does not beget himself. He sprouts from each of his segments. One can speculate on the wealth of each of these vegetal branchings that, in effect, resolve all Oedipal sexuality in the service of non-human sex, of sex through immediate contiguity and reduction. It still is the case that it is no longer a question of the fantasy of autogenesis. The mother and the father father have disappeared not in the service of an aleatory liberty of the subject but in service of a matrix called code no more mother no more father a matrix and it is the matrix that of the genetic code that now infinitely gives birth based on a functional mode purged of all aleatory sexuality the subject is also gone since Identical duplication puts an end to his division. The mirror stage is abolished in cloning, or rather, is, it is parodied therein in a monstrous fashion. Cloning also retains nothing, and for the same reason of the immemorial and narcissistic dream of the subject's projection into his ideal alter ego, since this projection still passes through an image, the one in the mirror, in which the subject is alienated in order to find himself again, or the one seductive and mortal in which the subject sees himself in order to die there. None of this occurs in cloning. <laughs> this is 
this is like a really excellent I, I'm little things are connecting in my brain about this being like this isn't to imply that Baudrillard would be what one would call these days an incel, but this is just like the perfect um, sex atheist manifesto, if, if that makes any sense. Um, that, well, to a degree, you see the same mentality in the abstinence camps where sex is a, a little death of, of true morality, true ethic, that kind of thing, and therefore this ego death, this highly intimate ego death needs to be maintained in uh, monogamous hegemonies essentially. It's just, it's like very Chad virgin, you know? No more medium, no more image, any more than an, in an industrial object is the mirror of the identical one that succeeds it in the series. One is never the ideal or the mortal mirage of the other. They can only be added to each other. And if they can only be added, it means they're not sexually engendered and know nothing of death. It is no longer even a question of being twins, since Gemini or twins possess a specific property, a particular and sacred fascination of the two, of what is two together and never was one. Whereas cloning enshrines the iteration of the same one plus one plus one plus one, etc. Neither child nor twin nor narcissistic reflection. The clone. Oh, fuck. The clone is the materialization of the double by genetic means. That is to say, the abolition of all alterity and of any imaginary, which is combined with the economy of sexuality. Delirious apotheosis of the productive technology. The segment has no need of imaginary mediation in order to reproduce itself any more than the earthworm needs earth. Each segment of the worm is directly reproduced as a whole worm, just as each cell of the American CEO can produce a new CEO. Okay. And um, yeah, ish. Just as each fragment of a hologram can again become a matrix, the matrix of the complete hologram, the information retains whole with perhaps somewhat less definition in each of the dispersed fragments of the hologram. This is how one puts an end to totality. If all information can be found in each of its parts, the whole loses its meaning. It can also be the end of the body, the singularity called body, whose secret is precisely that it cannot be segmented into additional cells, that it is an indivisible configuration to which its sexuation is witness. Very long parenthetical clause right there. Is witness, period. Paradox. Cloning will fabricate sex beatings in perpetuity, in perpetuity, since they are similar to their model, whereas thereby sex becomes useless. But precisely, sex is not a function. It is what makes a body a body, what exceeds all the parts, all the diverse functions of this body. Sex, or death in this sense, is the same thing as <laughs> what exceeds all information that can be collected on a body. Well, where is this information collected? Tell us, Baudrillard. And the genetic formula. This is why it must be necessarily want to forge a path of autonomous reproduction independent of sexuality and of death. Already, biophysio-anatomical science, by dissecting the body into organs and functions, begins the process of the analytic decomposition of the body, and of micromolecular genetics is nothing but the logical consequence. Though at a much larger level of abstraction and simulation, at the nuclear level of the command cell, at a, the direct level of the genetic code around which this whole phantasmagoria is organized, from a functional and mechanistic point of view, each organ is still only a partial and differentiated prosthesis. Already simulation, but traditional. From the point of view of cybernetics and computer science, it is the smallest undifferentiated element. Each cell of a body becomes embryonic prosthesis of this body. Interesting. It is the genetic formula inscribed in each cell that becomes a veritable modern prosthesis of all bodies. 
If the prosthesis is commonly an artifact that supplements a failing organ or the instrument, what year did he write this? Nineteen ninety four and nineteen ninety eight. That's really interesting. Because that's actually very, very albeit not necessarily completed completely biologically rooted, but a very interesting twist, I suppose, um, when it comes to stem cell stem cell research. Because that's functionally what it is. Um if the prosthesis is commonly an artifact that supplements a failing organ or the instrumental extensions of the body, then the DNA molecule, okay, that's not true though, which contains all of the information relative to a body is the prosthesis par excellence, the one that will allow for the indefinite extension of the body, of this body, by the body itself. This body being itself nothing but the indefinite series of its prostheses. The cybernetic prosthesis becomes infinitely more subtle and still more artificial than any mechanical prosthesis. Because the genetic code is not natural, just as every abstract and autonomized part of the whole becomes an artificial prosthesis that alters this whole by substituting itself for it. Prothesis, this is the etymological meaning, one can say that the genetic code, where the whole of a being is supposedly condensed because of all of the information of the being, would be imprisoned there. There lies the incredible violence of genetic simulation. Is an artifact, an operational prosthesis, an abstract matrix from which we will be able to emerge no longer even through reproduction but through pure and simple renewal, identical beings assigned to the same controls. Violence. My genetic patrimony was fixed once and for all when a certain spermatozoa entered a certain ovum. This heritage contains the recipe for all of the biochemical processes that realized me and ensured my functioning. A copy of this recipe is inscribed in each of the dozens of millions of cells that constitute me today. Each of these cells know how to manufacture me. Ah! Oops. Am I still here? Oh, I'm still here. Oops. A copy of this recipe is inscribed in each of the dozens of millions of cells that constitute me today. Each of these cells know how to manufacture me before being of my cell of a liver or my blood, a cell is of me. It is thus theoretically possible <laughs> to manufacture an individual identical to me, starting with one of these cells. Oh, honey. <laughs> Cloning is thus the last stage of the history and modeling of the body, the one at which, reduced to its abstract and genetic formula, the individual is destined to a serial propagation. It is necessary to revisit what Walter Benjamin said of the work of art in its age of mechanical reproducibility. What is lost in the work that is serially reproduced, its aura, its singular quality of the here and the now, its, 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 its aesthetic form, it has already lost its ritual form and its aesthetic quality. And according to Benjamin, it takes on and it's in, in its destiny of reproduction, a political form. What is lost in the original, which is only a history itself nostalgic and retrospective, can reconstitute as authentic. Oh, come on, man. I'll leave my commentary for the end. The most advanced, the most modern form of this development, which Benjamin described in cinema photography and contemporary mass media, is one in which the original lo no longer even exists, since things are conceived from the beginning as a function of their unlimited reproduction. This is what happens to us with cloning, no longer only at the level of messages, but at the, the level of individuals. In fact, this is what happens to the body when it ceases to be conceived as anything but a message, as a stockpile of information and of messages, as fodder for data processing. This nothing is opposed to the body being serially reproduced in the same way Benjamin 
describes the reproduction of industrial objects in the images of mass media. There is a procession of reproduction over production, a procession of the genetic model over all possible bodies. It is the eruption of technology that controls this reversal of a technology that Benjamin was once already describing and its total consequences as a total medium, but one still of the industrial age, gigantic prosthesis that controlled the generation of objects and identical images in which nothing could be differentiated any longer from anything else, but still without imagining the current sophistication of this technology. Thanks. Thanks, Ricardo. Oh, I'm hungry. In which nothing could be differentiated any longer from anything else, but still without imagining the current sophistication of this technology, which renders the generation of identical beings possible, though there is no possibility to of a return to an original being. The prostheses of the industrial age are still external, exotechnical, and those which we know have been subdivided and internalized, esotechnical. We are in the age of soft technologies, genetic and mental software. As long as the prostheses of the old industrial golden age were mechanical, they still returned to the body in order to modify its image. Conversely, they themselves were metabolized in the imaginary and in this technological metabolism was also part of the image of the body. But when one reaches a point of no return, dead end, parenthetical, in simulation. That is to say, when the prosthesis goes deeper, is interiorized in, infiltrates the anonymous and the micromolecular heart of the body. As soon as it is imposed on the body itself as the original model, burning all the previous symbolic circuits, the only possible body is the immutable, uh, the immutable repetition of the prosthesis. And then it is the end of the body, of its history and its vicissitudes. The individual is no longer anything but a cancerous, metas metasta uh, cancerous metastasis. The proliferation of the same cell, such as occurs with cancer. There is a narrow relation between the key concept of the genetic code and the pathology of cancer. The code designates even the small, smallest simple element, the minimal formula to which an entire individual can be reduced, and in such a way that he can only reproduce himself identically to himself. Cancer designates a proliferation ad infinitum of the base cell without taking into consideration the organic laws of the whole. It is the same thing with cloning. Baudrillard, that's not how any of this works. You have a good point, but that's not the way to make it. <laughs> it is the same thing with cloning. Nothing opposes itself any longer to the renewal of the same, to the unchecked proliferation of a single matrix. Formerly, sexed reproduction still stood in opposition to this. Today, one can finally isolate the genetic matrix of identity. And... My, I'm sorry, I've been reading way too much of Cole recently, so every time he uses identity or any type of just referring to, to the Bobby, to the being, I just... Yeah. One will be able to eliminate all the differentiation, differenti <laughs> the differential vicissitudes that once constituted the aleatory charm of individuals. If all cells are conceived primarily as a receptacle of the same genetic formula, not all only all of the identical individuals, but all the cells of the same individual. What are they but the cancerous extension of this base formula? The metastasis that began with the industrial objects ends with cell cellular organization. It is useless to ask oneself if cancer is an illness of the capital age. I'm just going to read that one more time to make sure I'm processing it correctly. It is useless to ask oneself if cancer is an illness of the capitalist age. 
It is in effect the illness that controls all contemporary pathology because it is the very form of virulence of the code. An exacerbated redundancy of the same signals, an exacerbated re redundancy of the same cells. The stage of the body changes in the course of, of uh, 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 uh. the stage of the body changes in the course of an irreversible technological progression, from tanning in the sun, which already corresponds to an artificial use of the natural medium, that which to say is making itself a prosthesis of the body, itself becoming a simulated body. But where lies the truth of the body? To domestic tanning with an iodine lamp, yet another good old. Mechanical technique, to tanning with pills and hormones, chemical and ingested prosthesis, and finally to tanning by intervening in the genetic formula, an incomparably more advanced stage, but a prosthesis nonetheless, that is, it is simply definitively integrated, it no longer even passes through either the surface or the orifices of the body. One passes by different bodies. It is the schema of the whole that is metamorphosized. Traditional prosthesis, which serves to repair a failing organ, changes nothing in the general model of the body. Organ transplants are still of this order, but what should be said of mental modeling the, be, uh, the, via psychotropic agents and drugs? It is the stage of the body that is changed by them. The psychotropic body is a body modeled from the inside, no longer, no longer passing through perspectival face, space of representation of the mirror and of the discourse. A silent, mental, already molecular and no longer specular body, a body metabolized directly without the mediation of the act or the gaze, an imminent body, without alterity, without a me, mise en scène. Thirsty for Baudrillard, right? Of death. That's what he says you're thirsty for. Mise en scène without transcendence, a body consecrated to the implosive metabolism of cerebral, endocrinal, endocrinal. Endocrinal? Endocrinal flows, a sensory but not sensible body because it is connected only to its internal terminals and not to the objects of perception which is why one can enclose it in a white, blank sensorality, disconnecting it from its own sensorial extremities. Without touching the world that surrounds it suffices. Oh, Jesus Christ. So many parentheses. Because it is connected with its internal terminals and not the objects of perception, a body is already homogenous at this stage of a plastic tactility, of a mental malleability, of a psychotropism at every level, already close to nuclear and genetic manipulation. That is to say, to the absolute loss of the image, that bodies cannot be represented either to others or to themselves. Bodies enucleated of their being and of their meaning by being transfigured into a genetic form. Oh my Jesus Christ. This sentence is two paragraphs long. Now I know how my advisor feels reading my own writing. <laughs> bodies enucleated of their being and of their meaning by being transfigured into a genetic formula or through biochemical instability. Point of no return, apotheosis of a technology that has itself become interstitial and molecular. And now the notes, because I think this is where he, if I remember correctly, this is where he rolls back on the, the cancer thing. Because that is the one bone I really do have to pick with this. Um, he, he gets, he, he does that thing where he miscontextualizes power. Notes, one must take into account that cancerous proliferation is also a silent dis disobedience of the injunctions of the genetic code. Cancer, if it fits with the logic of a nuclear computer science vision of human beings, is also its monstrous excrescence, excrescence, excrescence? I don't know that word, how to pronounce that word. It's monstrous negation because it leads to total disinformation and disaggregation. Revolutionary pathology of organic abandonment, Richard Pinchas would say in fictions, 
symptomatic notes on a mysterious illness, entropic delirium of organisms resent, resim, resisting the negentropy, the negentropy of informational systems. It is the same conjunction that, as that of the masses vis-a-vis -vis structured social formations. The masses are also cancerous metastases outside of any social organicity. Wow, that was terrible. That was a bad sentence. The same ambiguity is operative in cloning as it, it wants the triumph of the controlling hypothesis. Oh, this ain't it, Chief. I know where you're going. The same ambiguity in, is operative in cloning as it, it is at once the triumph of the controlling hypothesis, that of the code and of the genetic information, and an eccentric distortion that ex destroys its coherence. Besides, it is prof profitable that this is left to a future story that even the clonic twin will never be identical to its progenitor, will never be the same if only because it will have had another before it. It will never be just like what the genetic code in itself has changed it to. Millions of inter interferences will make it, despite everything, a different being who will have the very same blue eyes of its father, which is not new. And the cloning experiment will at least have the advantage of demonstrating the radical impossibility of mastering a process simply by mastering information and the code. Oh, this ain't it, Chief. I No, he has some really excellent, excellent points when it comes to the, um, the propagation factor, the industrialization and ownership of... Uh, bodily autonomy is reactionary, I suppose, to the system in which we live. Uh, that, that, that is a very excellent point. Um, you can make a very much more accessible argument to the uh, capitalization of reproductive technologies that we're seeing now and uh, the reactions therein. I do, I'm sure there's probably a test tube baby potentially watching this, but you, you're no less of a human being. <laughs> You know, but Karen in 1992 and uh, the rest of her cavalry church would say differently because it, the process of your creation diverts this death, diverts this human making act. So he makes a very good point in terms of that being a thing. However, the way we are seeing cloning occur, and if, it, if I'm not mistaken, during the time he had written this, um, I don't think like the first formal experiments in cloning like Dolly were until the mid to late 90s, if someone wants to fact check me on that. But when he's writing this, it was purely speculative technology. And the way in which it is happening, when he is envisioning it as a speculative technology, is not what happens. It is not materially what cloning is and how it happens. Although, again, he makes a very excellent point with regards to uh, cellular scaffolding and the, I suppose, the reframing of a genetic matrix and approaching things like stem cell technology and that kind of thing. It's a very effective tool of destigmatizing. But, yeah, as per cloning, the same it, Chief. Um, side note on cloning, I think one of the last really successful attempts at cloning was this lady who had her dead dog, like, cloned, like the, the baby, no, it, well, it was old, he was a very old uh, French pug, and he died, and he passed away, and so she decided to bring him back to life by having him uh, cloned in so much that his genetic material was born again. And it is apparently very scary in a way to her, in a good way, how alike uh, Bubsy number two and Bubsy number one are in terms of personality, temperament, and that kind of thing. But she has noted, I don't know, it's a, it's a fascinating thing, and I, I think it's very, it's an effective framing on Baudrillard's part that he does frame this in terms of the, uh, the story of it, the um, speculativeness of it. But anyway, thank you for hanging out with me this evening. Thank you for listening to me very uh, 
Impulsive Lead, Simulacra and Simulation by one of our, my pro, one of my very problematic half phase Jean Baudrillard, and signing off from your Philbook Doomer GF when I find the the Live video button. <laughs>